On this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to wire a split receptacle with the end of run switch where the outlet is divided and you can control the bottom outlet like this with the switch and the top outlet is constantly powered on. So stay tuned. I'm Jay from Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, please consider pressing the subscribe and notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. Just a quick disclaimer, we are gonna be working with electrical components today. My electrical codes and your electrical codes might be different, so always check that you're always up to date with your current local electrical code and make sure that you always have the proper permit before working with any type of electrical. And also make sure that the power from your circuit breaker is turned off. If you are unsure and you're unconfident of working with any type of electrical equipment, please hire a certified qualified electrician. With that being said, let's get to the video. So you're probably wondering what's the point of wiring a split receptacle? Well, if you want to control a lamp by a switch itself and have one part of your outlet still powered on, you can control that lamp where you can do, if you don't want a main uh, lighting on your room, like for example, a light fixture in the middle of your room and you just want it to be controlled by this when you enter it, then this is a good option. I know some older houses have this wiring and I actually have this myself where I have this on my main, I have a switch on my main entryway that controls a lamp onto by my window. So this is nothing new because if you look at your outlets, you can see that on the hot side of this outlet, there is a tab that connects both top and bottom um, terminals, which is you can pretty much take that tab off and I'll show you on how to do that as we go further onto this video. Here are all the tools and materials that I'll be using throughout this whole video. Let's start off with the wiring first. The wiring that you can use for this project is either a 12 gauge wire or a 14 gauge wire. What I'm holding here is a 14 gauge wire. It all depends on what power source it's coming from. If it's coming from a 15 amp circuit breaker or a 15 amp power source, you can use a 14 gauge wire or a 12 gauge wire. But if it's coming from a 20 amp circuit breaker or 20 amps power source, then you'll have to use a 12 gauge wire and above. Okay, so on this case for lighting, it's typical to find 14 gauge. So that's what we're gonna use today. We're gonna be using two types of wires. We're gonna be using a 14-2, which is two conductors, which is the uh, neutral and the hot and, the, and one ground, and a 14-3, which is three conductors, which is uh, neutral, uh, red, which can act as hot, and then you have a hot black right here, and a ground wire. If you're using a 12 gauge wire, similar types like this one. Now moving on to the duplex receptacle or outlet and switch that you'll be using. It all depends what you want to use. These are residential. Uh, you can tell that these are residential because they are cheaply made. It's blue at the back and it's not well constructed and sometimes it's not even tamper resistant. Now depending on the code that you're on, some codes require that you have a tamper resistance on newer builds and this one's actually commercial. You can tell that this is actually built really well. If you want to know more about outlets and how um, the difference between residential and commercial, I'll leave the video on the top right right here and you can decide for yourself. But in this case, we're just going to go stick with the, a common residential like this one and a common switch, single pole switch, which contains two brass, which is for two hot terminals and one ground and that's pretty much it simple as that and it has an on and off switch you always want to have a voltage detector this one i like using this volt claw this is awesome when you're going and trying to tuck in all the wires inside the j box very useful tool you got a wire stripper needle nose pliers utility knife and most of all i love using these wago connectors these wago connectors are you can have a two lever three lever this one's a five lever i wish they made four but i prefer these over wire nuts any day these are so easy to use you just lift up the lever put in your your um your conductors close them up and that's pretty much it so i'll be using this throughout the whole video this and all the thing materials that i use throughout this video i'll leave it in the description down below so check out those links and let's get to it. So just a heads up, I am gonna be using a mock-up like we see here. I love using this mock-up to show you guys what I'm doing, but we already have stage two, uh, one gang J boxes right there. This will uh, be deep enough for uh, one outlet and one switch. Now let's start off with the outlet J box first. I'm gonna take my 14-2 and feed it onto the first J box. I'm not gonna put 
cable staples on this but if depending on your code you already know you got to put some cable uh, wire staples there and i'm going to leave six inches of wiring onto this j box you're going to see some nicks on these wires i do apologize i reuse my wires on my videos but like what i do in all my wiring videos i like to put labels on them this is the power source and it's also the 14.2 before going through any of this make sure that you test for power and always test this first on a live power first so that you know that this is not this equipment is not broken put a pigtail onto the brass terminal you're going to put it in a clockwise position tighten that real well pigtail on the ground clockwise tighten that down real well we're going to go modify this receptacle this is what makes the receptacle a split receptacle because we're going to be isolating each outlet by this so see you see this tab you always wonder what this tab is this little tab connecting these two brass it's also the same here but we're not going to talk about that side we're only going to talk about the hot brass side what you're going to do is you're going to take your needle nose pliers and you're just going to take off this tab move this back and forth and break it off each one of this is independent now now if you're using a commercial it's about the same concept the tab is a little bit larger on this one but it's the same thing you're gonna go and break that off i want to reuse this so i don't want to do that let's go back to our j box with the 14.2 gauge wire we're gonna connect now our outlet with these wago wire connectors this is the 221 it has three levers very easy to use i prefer these over the wire nuts just open them up like this ground wire onto the first lever connect the ground wire of the 14.2 take the hot from the outlet and we're going to take the hot from the 14.2 put that inside now it's very important that when you're installing it through the wagos that there's no exposed wire in the bottom and that the wiring at the top is touching the ceiling or the roof of the wago wire connector now for the neutral of the 14.2, we are going to leave that and set that aside for now. We're going to go introduce the next cable and we're going to feed it onto this J box, which is going to be the 14.3. Hot red, the neutral and the hot black and the ground wire. Take the same 14.3, go through the stud. So I'm going to be labeling this cable 14.3 three wire with ground so let's start off with the easy part take the ground from the 14.3 and attach it to the last lever onto where all the grounds are connected don't worry we're going to go over this one more time again now this is very important take the black from the 14.3 make a loop and we're going to attach that onto the bottom terminal Put that in a clockwise manner tighten that down real well don't get weirded on this we're gonna take the red from the 14.3 and we're gonna feed it with the hot wires on the wago connectors now this is from the pigtail from the outlet the hot from the 14.2 power source and we're gonna put this 14.3 red in there with it so now you have two blacks one red onto this turn this wire connector now let's get and deal with the neutrals now the neutral from our 14.2 power source okay we're gonna loop that and then we're gonna attach this one onto the neutral side of the outlet now we're gonna attach it onto the top area the top terminal okay so let's do that take the new the neutral put it on a clockwise position we're going to take our 14.3 neutral, make a loop on that, and we're going to attach that onto the bottom terminal, the last terminal on the bottom of the outlet. Tighten that in a clockwise manner. Before we follow this 14.3 to that last J box to the switch, let's do a recap on this first J box first on everything all that's connected. So we have all our ground wire, the ground wire from the outlet, the ground wire from the 14.2 power source, and the ground wire from the 14.3 all connected together. Now we have our black hot wiring. The black wire from this outlet that's pigtailed is connected to the black hot wire 14.2 power source. 
and the red hot from the 14.3 is also connected onto here. Okay, so that's good. And that black hot wire from the 14.3 is connected onto the bottom terminal of this outlet. So now let's get with the neutrals. The neutral from the 14.2 is connected on the silver side top terminal of this outlet and then the 14.3 neutral is connected onto the bottom terminal of this outlet. So with that being said, that's hopefully you got, you understood that. Take a quick um, last look on this and let's go follow the 14.3 wire to the last J box. Following that 14.3, let's go to this final J box right here. This should be nice and easy. Now take your switch, make sure that it's in an upright position it's saying off and on right there, nice and upright. Take the black wire from the 14.3 and hook it to the top terminal, the brass top terminal. Put it in a clockwise manner. Now take the red from the 14.3 and connect it to the bottom terminal. Clockwise, tighten that down. Take your ground wire and attach it clockwise onto the ground terminal. That's complete for that switch. And now you're probably wondering what the neutral wire goes to. That pretty much is a loner wire. You're just gonna cap that off with your wire connector and we're just gonna leave that out. Just tuck that in. This is no you, you're gonna be using this for future use if you need to, but for this setup, we don't need it. Okay, so that's all set up. Pretty easy right here. You got the black at the top, red at the bottom, ground at the ground terminal, and that's pretty much it. So you already know me and if you watch my past videos, I like to do a full breakdown before I tuck everything into the J-Box. If you don't want to go through this, just fast forward. But I like to do this so you can get a quick and a clear understanding on how this whole circuit is run. Let's start off with the first J-Box with the power source. So we have our 14 gauge wire coming from a 15 amp power source. If you have a 12 gauge wire, you can only use that on a 20 amp power source. But here we're using a 14.2 that power source is running to our first J box. So onto our first J box, we have our outlet. Now it's very important that you take off the tab from this outlet. Now we connected a pigtail onto the top hot uh, screw terminal. And then we connected um, another pigtail onto the ground terminal. Now let's start out with the ground first. The, the ground from our 14.2 power source, the ground from our outlet, and the ground from our 14.3 is all fed into the same um, connector. Now let's get into the hot terminals. Now the black hot wire from our 14.2 power source is connected here, and the, the pigtailed hot terminal on the top of our outlet is connected here as well. And then the 14.3 red wire is connected here as well also. Now let's get to that last hot wire from our 14.3. The 14.3 hot wire is connected at the bottom of this outlet. Going to the neutrals, the 14.2 neutral wire that's coming from our power source is connected to the top terminal of this outlet and then the 14.3 neutral is going onto the bottom terminal of this outlet. So. That's that. Hopefully that made sense. I'm going to follow this 14.3 and go to our last J box. Now this is fairly easy right here. This one, we're just going to connect the black on the top um, hot terminal, connect the red on the bottom hot terminal, and then we are connecting the ground on the ground terminal. And with the neutral wire, this is not going to be used. That's just capped and we're just going to tuck that in. With that being said, that's pretty much the whole wire setup. Feel free to take a snapshot of this for future references, or if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section down below. I'll be glad to answer it. And that's how it is. Let's go and tuck these in. If you do have any um, terminals that are not occupied, make sure you tighten those down. It all is up to you. If you wanna wrap this up with electrical tape, some people use it. I'm not gonna use that personally because I am using a plastic J box. Let's tuck these in nice and neat. I like to tuck in the ground wires first. I am gonna be using my volt claw. There's a push um, end on this volt claw where you can use this to push the wires in. Flip this around and maneuver and twist the wires and orient it the way you want. 
everything is nice and tucked in let's turn on the power from the circuit breaker the top outlet is on see that now if we go on to the bottom there is no power on there so we'll leave that in there you know why there's no power it's because this switch is on the off position now if we turn this on there is now power being fed onto that outlet see that okay so now that we have our lamp let's put our lamp onto where we can control it which is the bottom like so and when we turn on the power it turns on so the top outlet is going to be constantly powered on you can put another light there like so and while that stays on you can turn off the lamp perfect 